Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. John this morning. It is the sixth Sunday after Trinity and called the Sunday of Brotherly Love, but we also hear of the giving of God's holy law and our relationship to that. So that will be our theme throughout the day. Pay attention to that as you hear the readings and the hymns. Uh, Welcome to our guests. Good to have you as well. Our order of service is here on the service folder, or you can use the screens if you prefer. And we'll begin with a hymn of invocation, The Law of God is Good and Wise, hymn 579.
We stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me. Lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy, sanctuary. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, have The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock, or the, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy." Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world, and them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the hearts. The fear of the Lord is clean, clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord is true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the heart. The epistles from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk and newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also, or we also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. For the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put into prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The scribes and the Pharisees spent their lives striving for righteousness. They dressed religiously. They studied the scriptures daily. They conducted all the affairs needed for the temple and the synagogue. They often did this from birth, set apart with lives to be lived in outward observance, the pinnacle of religion. The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees was impressive, a righteousness, though of appearance and not of the heart. As Jesus elsewhere says, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, the people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew 15. The scribes and the Pharisees, they honored God's word with a nod, but they really esteemed their traditions, man's traditions, over God's commandments. They were not concerned with faith in the divine promise. Instead, they were concerned with human praise and worldly glory. They wanted to be known as religious as possible so that men would honor and respect them. But as James says in his epistle, such religion is useless. For honor and respect are first due to God, as the holy law of God commands, as we heard in Exodus. Love God, and only then can you love your neighbor. So by way of example, to show how far they had come from God's holy law, Jesus reminds you of the fifth commandment. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. Good so far. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment too. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council as well. And whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now you might think that Jesus is just taking the law and he's amplifying it and making it even more severe, now adding additional law to the fifth commandment. Of course, if you were a Bible scholar, you'd know that he's actually just quoting the fifth commandment as it's taught in Leviticus. They had forgotten the full severity of God's holy law, its intended purpose. So if you think that the righteousness that God demands, it commands in the law, given at Sinai, could ever come from you, Jesus wants you to consider just one of the commandments today, the fifth. Jesus preaches the law lawfully, accomplishing what it was always meant to do. And he is, as he himself teaches in John, that the law was given to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That was always the point, the spirit working through this word of law to bring all of God's Israel captive to their sin so that they would never trust in themselves to bring about the righteousness God requires or to find hope or a future in themselves or even more to try to bring about a kingdom of heaven on earth by their own works and their own commands. So Jesus preaches the law lawfully, bringing every hearer under its accusation for who has kept the fifth commandment if it is taught in this way, who has not considered their neighbor a fool, even said as much, who has not hated his brother and maybe even murdered in their heart. When we're faced up with the law's demands, we really only have a few options. The first is the easiest. You could just ignore the word of God altogether, ignore that law and live by the desires of your heart, the old Epicurean delusion. We can see that all around us. God made me this way, they say. And then they live a rebellious, liberal life that denies everything that God has shown them by nature is actually true. And what he has explicitly 
commanded and forbidden in his holy word. We have shorthand terms for such people who live as if they mattered most and God did not matter at all. We call them either pagans or heathens. Unbelievers, you might just say. But that's not the only ones who hmm, try to get around God's word of law. You could adjust, manipulate, or massage the law into something that isn't quite so severe, not quite as harsh, more doable, more keepable. Soften the law with loopholes and escape clauses. Maybe the things that Jesus or Paul or someone else said only applied in the first century or in their context. Maybe we've actually just never really read the Bible the way that the original writers intended. Or so the loopholes and excuses go. This is the, the way of the liberal so-called Christian churches. There's another option too. So not just ignore the law or soften it, but this would be the legalist move. Adding new and more laws that are more doable and attainable while ignoring the full severity of what God actually commands and demands. That's who Jesus is after here in the text today, the Pharisees and the scribes. They have 600 some laws that they've added to those simple 10 words given by Moses or by way of Moses. And that was their way around. They had so many laws that, of course, only the most virtuous and righteous could possibly accomplish them. Of course, even that's a deceit, isn't it? And really, the only other option, the third way, is just to despair of any hope by way of the law. To see what God demands and say that there's no way. There's no way I could do that. And thus, there's no way out of its accusation. This is the work that the Holy Spirit wants to happen. That you would actually be in despair of yourself. He wants you to stop believing that there's a hope in you to believe, to be or to do or to say what God requires. That there's another way outside of God forgiving you your sins to attain to what God requires. The righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees is that of a perfect heart or a clean conscience. It is the righteousness of right motive, pure desire, perfect love, and a generous spirit. The righteousness that God requires seeks not its own benefit, but only what is best for the neighbor. It is a righteousness that covers up what would shame or bring the neighbor into disgrace. It is a righteousness that rejoices in helping the neighbor out of every trouble. It is, this is the righteousness that is needed and that God demands. Jesus says that if one does not have such righteousness, one cannot enter into God's kingdom. But such righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees is not found within ourselves. As the hymnist put it, it was a false and misleading dream that God his law had given, that sinners could themselves redeem and by their works gain heaven. The law is but a mirror bright to bring the inbred sin to light that lurks within our nature. There's the full severity of the law brought down upon us. But even when the full weight of the law came bearing down upon even our first parents and every parent since, the crushing blow of the law's hammer grinding us into pieces, casting us out of the garden, condemning us to a life of struggle, worry, and difficulty, and even death. That was never the last word, or even the primary word that God wanted you to hear. We spend a lot of time talking about thou shalt and thou shalt not. But that wasn't the ultimate point. So from the beginning, God the Father promised his son as the seed of the woman, born under the law to redeem those who suffered the law's killing blows. And then he repeated the promise over and over of this Messiah to every patriarch. And the promise of the seed of the woman was the hope of every matriarch. The faithful heard and believed God's word of judgment, yes, but they didn't stop there. They put their hope in the redemption, salvation, and deliverance of Jesus Christ, the promised seed, the branch from Jesse's torn down stump, the lamb that atoned for sins 
the scapegoat who bore those sins away. If such righteousness cannot be found within oneself, then righteousness before God must be found outside oneself. Or as the reformers gave us a shorthand, extra notes outside ourselves. And if this righteousness is to be valid before God, if it is to open up heaven to us, then it must be from God, from his word. And thanks to God, he has provided it. The way, no doubt, is Christ, who became our righteousness before God, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1. Christ is our righteousness, the fulfillment of that word spoken by Jeremiah 23. This is why St. Paul can speak th these wonderful words for us. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness, reckoned to him for righteousness. So our salvation, our righteousness, what God in Christ demands today is given to us actually by Christ. Not by our work, but a gift, justifying the ungodly, accounted, reckoned to us for righteousness. Thus our own theological constitution, that of this congregation, asserts this. Our churches teach that people cannot be justified before God by their strength, merits, or works. People are freely justified for Christ's sake through faith when they believe that they are received into favor and that their sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. By his death, Christ made satisfaction for our sins, and God counts this faith for righteousness in his sight. Osberg Confession, Article 4. So when Jesus says, I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven, he's speaking about himself and how he will purchase and win for you righteousness and give it to you freely as a gift. And thanks to Jesus for giving us that righteousness through his suffering and death. Thanks to Jesus for removing the crushing weight of the law and all its demands and commands and pressed into us instead the eternal weight of glory, the forgiveness of sins. Thanks to Jesus for forgiving us daily and richly through our baptism into his word and name. And thanks to Jesus that he gives us today his righteousness under bread and wine, that is his body and blood, for the forgiveness of our sins, our righteousness now and forever. And him alone is our only hope of life and salvation. Amen. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God,
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, our strength, our refuge, and our rock, do not be deaf to your people, but hear us from your most holy sanctuary in heaven through the mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all concord, by the death of your Son, you reconciled the world to yourself and made peace between God and man. Give us your spirit of reconciliation, that your people may live together in forgiveness and harmony. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you gave the law that we might know your will, suffer under the accusation of that law, and turn to Christ for salvation. Increase in us true fear, love, and trust in your holy name and saving word, that we may have no other gods but you. Guide and bless all fathers and mothers, pastors and teachers, as they bring up children in the discipline and knowledge of the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life and love, you forgive us for the sake of your Son, who was killed in our place. Do not hold our sins against us. Teach us to love and forgive our neighbors, to support them in every bodily need, to speak kindly to them, and to hold no hatred in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all truth, goodness, and beauty, teach us the truth of your word. Fill us with virtue and righteousness. By your Spirit, inspire in our hearts the adoration of your glory, that we may always be one with you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you bless us with many gifts. We rejoice with those who rejoice, especially this week, those celebrating their birthday. James, Thomas, Summer, Summer, Cora, Nicole, Donna, and Ansel. Those who rejoice in the memory of their baptism, Autumn, Griffin, Thomas, John, Ashton, Brandon, Dawson, Gabriella, Ruth, and Merlin. Those who will celebrate their anniversary, Greg and Sharon, and Jesse and Lisa. We ask your blessing upon all the households of our church, but especially this week with Doug and Lisa, Sean, Kyle, Jason, Jean, and Eric. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, in the Holy Supper, you forgive our sins and bind us together in your communion of love. Grant that we too may gladly forgive the sins of our brothers and let no division arise among those gathered at your table. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, in baptism, you join your children to the death and resurrection of your Son. Give healing to all those who have been baptized into your name especially praying for Dale, Pam, Joe, Melanie, Kelsey, Christopher, Marcy, Brad, Gus, Eileen, Ron, Doug, Bev, Joan, Pat, Wendell, Darlene. We intercede on behalf of Renata with her difficulty with sciatica nerve. Pray for Lydia, who will be having uh, operation this week. Continue to pray for Matt's mom, Donna, being treated for stroke. And we look out for Dasha, who need, is in need of new housing. For all this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless the memory of all our loved ones who have departed in the faith, and comfort all who mourn with the knowledge that being united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, in your mercy, Finally, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we confess that we are poor, miserable sinners with no good in us. Our hearts and our flesh and blood are so corrupted by sin that we are never without sinful desires in this life. Therefore, we implore you, forgive us our sins. Let your Holy Spirit so cleanse our hearts that we may love you, your word, abide in it, and by your grace be saved forever. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now's your opportunity, if you know of a brother or sister who you have sinned against or sinned against you, to reconcile with them with the peace of Christ.
Greet one another. There you go. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heart and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin.
We stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Part in his peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
you're seated. All right. Uh, two announcements. You can see coming up events. We are now in July, yes. Uh, music in the park is coming up really quick. There's a sign-up board um, outside. Are you going to say something? No, okay. Sign-up board. Uh, we need donations, volunteer help, opportunity out there. Uh, if you didn't already do that online, if you're of that persuasion. And then also um, the fireman's picnic parade. Need volunteers for that. Is Jenny here today? No. All right, so talk to the school office for more info about that. All right, we have Bible study today. We're going to talk about a cosmic tree. You say, what's a cosmic tree? Well, you have to come to find out, all right? So Lord be with you all and keep you safe this week.